ready in the lab. We'll be of the assistance of Ramsey from Merritt, who's going to, we're going to demonstrate the Arcadia balloon and the power curve. So it's going to be a typical uh, transpolicular access. And I may go a little flat here, just like I discussed, rather than, than uh, the typical 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock position. And so I'm going to come over and start really about a little higher than that, really about the 9 o'clock position on the vertebral body. So, a good start point right there. I'm using a single bevel needle, and we will come down using a similar approach as what Dr. Lee had, and we won't violate the medial wall of the pedicle until we're in the posterior portion of the vertebral body. All right, let's go lateral. All right, so I'm gonna turn the bevel away. We're just a couple of millimeters away from that posterior wall. And I turn the, the tip back toward me. I'm gonna, a couple of easy taps, make sure through the posterior wall, turn it back, direct it medial. And we don't really need to direct it that much more medial because we do have a steerable system. It's called the power curve. So I'm gonna take the stylet out. I'm gonna take the power curve. This is here and let me demonstrate one thing. So this is a directional indicator, and the arrow is pointing this way. This is a clockwise turn that turns the power curve tip almost 90 degrees. And it does so by steerable uh, internal stainless steel cables. And this has a bevel here, and so the steering is, goes the same direction. It accentuates the steering away from the face of the bevel and toward the tip. So the needle will natively go away from the face and toward the tip, and this accentuates that steering capability. So I'm gonna straighten it back out, and I'm gonna place it back in the needle, the cannula, and we're gonna tap it into the vertebral body just a little bit. And then once we get it in, I'm gonna start putting it under a little bit of steering pressure. I'm gonna turn it clockwise. And you can hear this vertebral body is incredibly hard on the inside. It has some of that discogenic sclerosis, right? And so we're just going to get it out toward the anterior portion. You can see it's starting to foreshorten a little bit. Starting to turn back toward us. And we're going to Stop that position right there. Steve was coming around and taking an AP shot. You kind of see where we are there on the AP. And I'm going to use the Arcadia balloon. We should be all the way across to the other side, at least. Yes. And so that's a very nice throw. And I want to replace that. I'm going to just remove this, just counter clockwise turn and take it out. And this will show you, demonstrate to you how hard this bone is. You pull it a little bit towards you. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So, Arcady balloon. This balloon is steerable. Uh, same as what follows the power curve. It's got marker bands approximately. This is a, uh, a very low compliance balloon and you turn it, the knob clockwise and it goes to the exact same curve on the distal tip as the power curve. And this is design matched, size matched, and it's a very low compliance balloon with lots of power. And it's designed to put this in on the AP. It's going to follow the pathway. And sometimes you need to give it a little bit of turn, right, to have it follow the pathway. And it's going to go to the other side. We to get our marker bands centered in the center of the vertebral body. About right, about right there. And we'll start inflation by looking lateral. So I'm going to engage the atrium syringe, the Levine syringe, high pressure syringe, and we'll take a look on the lateral view. And hopefully we will see the balloon start to inflate. 
and it's kind of being blocked a little bit by the sclerosis that's anterior and superior, but we're gonna do this anyway. This is a balloon that's deployed more medial lateral, and this is a very high pressure balloon. This is called, the, 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 this is made by Merritt, and it's called the Arcadia balloon. And so this is nice, I'm gonna inflate it just a little bit more until, or until it pops. Incredibly dense bone, and unscrew it, and then we are going to add cement. And this is the curved cement delivery device. Um, as you can see, it does have a built-in curve uh, with directional indicator approximately, and this is the cement container here, and we will put it in following that same curved pathway, and we will inject some cement. Because Rams, you mixed this previously, so it should be ready to go. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna have to add mix the cement with a little bit of that, the contrast, but usually, typically, we'll be able to separate the cement from the contrast as the cement goes in. The contrast will start to come out. And we still have pretty low pressures. Doug, you're always mindful uh, to mention to the fellows that uh, cement and balloon inflation is done in the lateral not in yes. the AP view, always in the lateral, so that you can keep an eye on the dural sac, the spinal canal. We get a little bit of high pressure here, so I'm gonna check the system. And Ramsey checked it before, but I think we might have a little plug in the distal tip here. Yeah, and we do. Okay, I'm going to swap out the cannula. Good. Thank you. And this delivery cannula is straight. It will follow the pathway created by the balloon, and this will attach here by clockwise turn. And that already feels better. Let's take a look. There we go. And now we'll, we should be able to see the cement coming down the needle. There it goes. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and, while we're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and take the whole thing forward a bit. Since we're delivering it as a straight device, I'm going to advance the needle all the way to the anterior portion there. And maybe even get into a little bit softer bone. I'm going to steer the bevel down so the needle will go down a little bit. So here's how hard the bone is. Can you see that needle bend? Nice. So it's a little bit makes the style up a little bit snug to come out. It'll make this a little bit snug to fit in there. Benefit though is it won't come out. It'll stay in there. Okay. All right. Let's inject some more cement, shall we? So you can see the cement coming out the distal tip. You can also see some of the uh, subtle uh, but real findings of the rest of that contrast kind of being pushed out of there. And the cement will be the darker black, and the contrast will be more gray in appearance. And that discogenic sclerosis from uh, from this patient is just very obvious and very profound. Okay, so. And you can see the cement is going everywhere except into that area of discogenic sclerosis. And that's normal, that's, that's what happens. 
Questions from the audience? Um, two questions. Uh, one, did he mean, does he want the balloon to pop like it did? And then number two, is there any concern over breach of the vertebral end plates, like going into the disc? Does that matter with outcomes or um, safety? So the first of the question first, the, uh, the balloon does pop occasionally. These are low compliance balloons. These are rated, let's come back around to AP. These are rated to 700 PSI. The balloon actually goes far uh, higher than that in terms of, of inflation pressure. I've had the, this is Arcadia balloon. I've had it up to 12, 1500, I mean, routinely. And this uh, will go higher than that. It looks like a nice distribution everywhere along the mid to inferior portion. Let's go back lateral, please. But no, it, it will hit a sharp shard of bone. In this case, that intervertebral sclerosis is just you know, very prominent. And it's, I, I am not surprised that the balloon popped. In fact, I will often just kind of purposely uh, take it to its, its limit just to kind of see where that limit is. So whenever the balloon bursts, what happens it's just what you saw. So the contrast goes into the vertebral body, then it goes out into the vascular system. Uh, again, that doesn't bother us at all because back in the day when we used to do vertebral plasty, we would purposely inject contrast into the vertebral body to look for egress. And that was thought to give us the potential to be able to identify extravasation earlier. Uh, it works out that that didn't really happen. That's not, not really an advantage. So we stopped doing uh, intravertebral body injection of uh, contrast. That's not something uh, that we did anymore. Uh, the extravasation of cement into the disc is important for two reasons. Number one, in an intact disc, a healthy disc, it causes premature degeneration. But most of these people will on the average be about 75 years old, so that's not really an issue. The more you extravasate into the disc, especially the volume, and the farther anteriorly you extravasate into the disc, the greater the propensity for an adjacent segment fracture. So that's important. But look, bottom line is, if it starts to extravasate, wait. Time is on your side because it hardens faster in the body, provided the person is alive, than it does on the back table. So you can just wait, have it harden, and then plug in the area of egress that you don't want to have going to, and you can just keep injecting. And so a little patience, and we've injected the entire content of this cement container, and that's actually a very decent fill. It goes, and your, the goal for this is between the pedicle end plate to end plate. Obviously, we didn't reach the superior end plate, but we don't need to because the uh, density of that sclerosis is just very profound, as you can see by the bending of the needle. So that's a pretty decent lateral view, and we'll uh, come around, take an AP shot, and we'll see distribution. So your goal should be between the pedicle end plate to end plate, maximizing the height reduction, and this essentially goes everywhere where that discogenic sclerosis isn't, and that's a very decent fill pattern for the vertebral body that we have to work with. When you're looking at the vertebral fill pattern on the AP, what you want to try to achieve with your balloon and with your fill is from the medial border of the pedicle on the contralateral side to the medial border of the pedicle on the ipsilateral side, because that gives the central strength of the vertebral body. Doug, from your extensive experience reading um, uh, foreign bodies of the abdomen, uh, what size caliber bullet would you think that was? Yeah, let me, uh, let's, let's uh, wh which side was that on? Let's, let's take it. It's in the flank it. somewhere, because the AP let's take it. Steve, can you pull maybe towards you? Or just maybe over here, just see what. And pull back toward this side, see if it's over here, push. No, it's, it's in the, let's, say, yeah, we have let's, a let's file. just flip back lateral and see where we are. Yeah, we have a file at the University of California, uh, San Francisco, uh, foreign objects uh, in the abdomen. So, uh, you know, that uh, well, does not look like a 22 or a 45, so I would have to say that's uh, 38. Yeah, exactly. Snub nose 38. Yes. Yep, that's what that is. <laughs> and it went through soft tissue because it's got no deformation of the bullet. Exactly. <laughs> okay. That's vertebral augmentation. 
with the Merritt Arcadia balloon and the power curve.